Please be seated. Good evening and welcome graduates, families, and honored guests to our 2016 ISAEP GED graduation ceremony. Graduates, we are proud to honor you this evening and what marks a life milestone for you, getting your high school credential. On behalf of the high school GED staff and everyone here this evening, I extend to you a very sincere congratulations. I would like to take a moment to introduce to you our honored guests that we have this evening and thank each of you for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule to, to recognize the accomplishments of our graduates. From the Williamsburg James City County School Board, we have with us Chairman Mr. Kelly, our parliamentarian, Dr. Beers, Ms. Hummel, Ms. Minor, and Ms. Young. From the James City County Board of Supervisors, we have Vice Chairman, Dr. McLennan, and Ms. Sadler. I would also like to extend um, hello to Dr. Mansfield, who is with us tonight from the Virginia Department of Education in the Office of Adult Education and Literacy. And finally, our superintendent, Dr. Constantino, and Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Heron. Thank you to all of the Williamsburg James City County staff from all three high schools and the central office who are celebrating these graduates with us tonight. We appreciate you taking time to be here as well. I would like to also thank Dr. Worley, principal of Jamestown High School for the use of the auditorium for our ceremony, as well as the Jamestown staff who helped make this possible. I do have a few others that I must thank in, in addition. Uh, I would like to thank the entire Student Services Department for their support in making this evening possible. Caitlin Wisnett for her extreme organization and help preparing for this evening. And thank you to Eric Swenson and Jack Cox for handing out programs for us tonight. And finally, please join me in recognizing the Jamestown Lafayette Honors Orchestras under the direction of Ms. Jacqueline for providing this evening's music. At this time, I invite our school board chairman, Mr. Kelly, to the stage to share a congratulatory message with you. He will be followed by Dr. Constantino. Thank you, Anne, I appreciate that. Um, and thank you all for coming. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and every year I make a special effort to uh, be at this ceremony. It's um, very good to be joined by several of my school board members, uh, fellow school board members, and I appreciate them making the effort, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Beglen and Ms. Sadler from the Board of Supervisors. Um, I make a special effort to be here every year because of the effort each of you have made to be here. In a little over a week, I'll be attending the graduation ceremonies of each of our high schools, it is appropriate that this ceremony is first, that those of you completing your GD are at the head of that line, at the front of the class, that you take a back seat to no one. Each of you had a path in life which has led you to this point. That path led you to begin your journey for your GED. Make no mistake about it, the requirements for this, this credential are hard. How many of you have, how many have you seen come and go as you, sent, as you said, since you started this journey. But you persevered. You stuck, it, stuck to it when it got hard. You stuck to it when life might have gotten in the way. There is, this has been no easy task. Tonight is a culmination of achievement, a milestone marker in your life. You should be justly proud. I am proud to be here, and I am proud of every person who will be walking across the stage and whose hand I will be privileged to shake. Congratulations and best wishes on all that you set out to do in life. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. It's always an honor to be able to say a few words to you. And first, I would like to certainly congratulate the graduates for their outstanding accomplishment. But also, I would be remiss if I didn't also congratulate and thank all of their support 
in the audience, family and friends and siblings and all of the people who have had a hand in helping these folks get to where they are. I think that uh, there is a tremendous lesson that one can learn, and the earlier one learns it in life, uh, the better off we are. And that, that is the lesson of persistence. Uh, and I'm reminded of a, of a very quick story about Winston Churchill. Uh, I'm sure you know who Winston Churchill is. Uh, you're on the stage, so you've got to know who Winston Churchill is. Uh, uh, but a colorful, a colorful uh, prime minister of Great Britain. It is alleged, and I couldn't find the source for this. Uh, it's on the internet, so it must be true. But it is alleged that um, uh, Sir Winston Churchill was invited to give a commencement speech at a famous university. And um, everyone was thrilled to hear the wise words of this great, great leader. And he stood up in front of the massive crowd and waited for a minute and is, is said that his speech contained this, his entire speech. Never, 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 never give up. Thank you and sat down. I can't say that any better than Sir Winston Churchill. Congratulations to our graduates. Thank you to the staff, and many thanks to parents, families, and friends. Thank you for having me this evening. Thank you both for your kind remarks. At this point in the program, I would like to recognize the high school GED staff, Mr. Swinson and Ms. Cox. Without these two dedicated professionals, we may not even be here for a ceremony. They jumped right in before school even started and began to figure out what students needed to be successful on the GED exam. Throughout the year, they have provided not only instruction, but a little counseling along the way, logistical support, ensuring that students got where they needed to be when they needed to be there, and most importantly, they provided a lot of encouragement to both students and families on a daily basis. Their efforts, combined with the work of these graduates, have gotten us here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Swenson and Ms. Cox, for all you've done going above and beyond each and every day without hesitation. Now it is time to hear from our student speakers. Mr. Swenson will introduce them for you. Thank you very much for being here, families, distinguished guests, and especially graduates. You know, one of the joys of being a GED teacher is that we get to form close relationships with the students you see on stage. And one of the things that Mrs. Cox and I learned early on is that each of these students has a very compelling life story. And we're gonna hear from a couple of them tonight. The first is a young lady who came to us late last year and we knew straight away that she was going to be in and out quickly. She was very determined and showed, showed a lot of resolve. And sure enough, she was out before we knew it. Our first student speaker tonight is Miss Angel Truehill. <laughs> Brief modification here. Classmates, today is a very memorable day considering you only graduate once. We are gathered here today to celebrate our long journey through the jungle called life. Everyone here has a story, a passion, a dream, but more importantly, we all have goals. To be somebody, to go somewhere, or else we wouldn't be here. Of course, life doesn't always go with what we have planned. For instance, I found out I was pregnant my sophomore year, and things went from juggling drama and classes to how I was gonna hold on to my life goals with another human being depending on me. But that didn't stop me from succeeding. In fact, it motivated me to do anything I needed to do to support my daughter. So with my story being told, I want you to know that no matter what tries to hinder you from achieving your goals, with no matter, or with enough strength, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. And I'm not your parents or teachers who are obligated to say that. I say it because we're all here achieving the diploma, and that's a perfect example. It is said by J.K. Rowling that it is impossible to live without failing at something. 
unless you live so cautiously that you might as well have not lived at all, in which case you failed by default. So even through all the failed tests and classes, failed relationships and failed expectations of not only society but for yourself, you will make it. You will, make, you will be somebody, so be the best somebody you can be. You may not be the doctor or lawyer you'd hope to be, but there's only so much you can achieve. So be sure to achieve the greatest you can so you can be happy for yourself, so you can be proud of yourself. Thank you, Angel. And next, we have a young man who came to us earlier this year. He was very quiet and reserved, but again, we found out straight away that he was going to be one of our quick finishers. He had the grit and determination to get it done quickly, as many of the students on stage here did. And so I introduce Mr. Jack Dement. Good evening. Life, what a concept. I was born into the world not knowing a single thing about this big, turbulent planet we like to call Earth. Next thing you know, you say your first words, then you take your first steps. Life seems a bit more interesting at that point. Sure, you encounter a few hurdles in the road, but you eventually work things out and leap right on over them because life itself gives you another chance to shine bright and excel. I've had many opportunities to do great things, but I always slept on those opportunities. Through the many experiences I have endeavored in my life, I have learned that life is all about chances. Once you have the chance to do something powerful and vastly amazing, don't sleep on it. The world is full of many different people. There are people who care, and there are people who don't. Nice people, or the people who care, will be by your side and won't try to change you because they accept you for who you are. But the people who don't care will hate you, rate you, shake you, and break you. But how strong you stand is what makes you. Everyone has a purpose, and with that purpose, achievements are earned, friends are made, and life is much more interesting. As Pablo Picasso once said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. This gift could be anything. Someone could be gifted with art, such as Pablo. Someone could be gifted with the ability to read music. Whatever the gift may be, you grow into it and you make a passion out of it and keep going. Because in a life full of joy and passion, there are no limits. There have been many occurrences in my life in which I had lived on the edge in my own world. We all do crazy things from time to time, but we learn from these things and we move on. Some people feel like I felt and say, ah, oh, man, I don't want to get out of bed today. But why do we feel that way? What is holding us back and making us feel so exhausted? Then all of a sudden I'd realize that the problem I had was my lack of motivation. Before I enrolled into the GED program, I was not the best high school student. I wasn't the most popular kid around. My reputation wasn't so good either. I mean, I slept in class. I was defiant towards many teachers, and I was alone for a long time. I didn't have the best grades, and I didn't have the best excuses. I was just so stressed out and overwhelmed with everything that school was the last thing I ever cared about. But the GED program, seemed difficult at first, very difficult. As soon as I took my first test, I, I said to myself, man, I knew I failed this test as soon as I walked through the door. Turns out the program wasn't difficult at all. With the help of Mrs. Cox and Mr. Swanson, <clears throat> excuse me, the help of Mrs. Cox and Mr. Swanson, the GED program was a breeze and a pathway for success. I thank the both of you very much. Throughout my experience as a student, I personally believe that the GED program eased my stress, cured my doubts, and really opened the doors to opportunity for me. 
and I'm proud to be here with all of you today. And this is a very special achievement for all of us. Thank you. Thank you both for sharing your stories with us. We know that you are very prepared to move on and be caring, nice, productive citizens. Um, I do have a small token of appreciation for you both, so Angel and Jack, if you'll come forward. So speaking of caring, productive citizens, I had the pleasure of meeting our keynote speaker, Miguel Gray, last fall. As I was looking for someone that could mentor one of my students, uh, Joan and Mary at Literacy for Life recommended Miguel to me as someone who would be able to connect with my student and really help him out. I reached out to Miguel, who without question agreed to come meet with the student and see what he could do to help, even taking off the day of work to do so. Even though the student stood us up, I was able to capitalize on the opportunity of spending some time with Miguel. I began asking him all sorts of questions about himself, trying to get to know him, and after only knowing him for about 20 minutes, I couldn't help but ask him if he would be the honored speaker at our graduation ceremony. Miguel will certainly share some of his story with you tonight, I'm sure, but graduates, I want you to know that based on what I know about Miguel, he understands all of the struggles that you've had along the way. Miguel is an irrigation specialist by trade, and he now works for John Deere Landscapes in sales. Without further ado, I give you Mr. Miguel Gray. Good evening. Uh, like Ann said, I've definitely been through a lot, and I understand all the recipients up here struggle. I'm also going to give a little bit of my story so everyone can better understand where I'm speaking from. Uh, in 2008, I was one of 300,000 plus unemployed Virginians. After being unemployed for about a year, I had work doing irrigation. Uh, life was becoming a struggle, being out of a job. And I was sitting here trying to juggle work, a child, just finishing school a month later, having a child, and all of the struggles of life started hitting me at one time. So I was thinking, how am I going to overcome all of these struggles of life and I didn't even have a GED? I was approaching my age of 30. I had a daughter that was 10 years old. She looked up to me dearly. And all I'm constantly thinking is, how am I going to help take care of this kid? I don't have a GED. I hardly can get good work. So eight years ago, well, eight years later now, I stand before everybody as a proud 2012 GED graduate. So, yes, so thank you, thank you. So uh, listening to some of the stories I had in my mind, what I wanted to talk about and say, but when I look back, at school, like one of the students was saying, I wasn't the best student. I wasn't the best learner either. I just tried to coast through and do what I could do. Uh, it wasn't enough. I ended up going through different levels and avenues of education to where it ended up being in the GED program. Trying to maintain that program as well as being a teenage father and not wanting to be a statistic, I wanted to be able to be there to help take care of my daughter. So the GED did kind of go along my backside. But the more and more I went in life without it, the more and more I saw my struggle. I'm, I'm very happy to know that Ms. Mansfield is in this audience today because she might not know or remember me from all of the students, but the very last time I took the GED test on an adult level, it changed everything in my, my life just changed. She called me two times prior to tell me that I didn't pass. So the third time she called, 
I had already prepared myself to know that I wasn't going to pass. So she called again with the news that I had passed that time. I was very silent. And next thing you know, I just started crying on the phone because I actually had passed it that time. And I knew that that time I took it was the last time for that particular test before they changed it. So to me, it, it ended the era of the three strikes you're out and the, the not giving up. So I applaud you all and take my hats off to you too for your efforts to keep going and not giving up. And just like an uh, earlier speaker said, when they have the graduations this weekend, you all will be at the front. And that's one thing that I always recommended and like to know that, hey, high school diploma, GED, you're still one and the same. You can't sit neither one of you beside a high school graduate and tell who's the difference. Only thing I personally think, and this is my personal, is that we got a little more fight in us. We got a little more hope in us because we don't give up. And, and we do have to do it based on the want to do it, the desire to do it, and the desire to succeed. So again, I take my hats off to y'all. I'm happy to be a part of the GD family with y'all, and I wish you nothing but the best in the rest of your life. Thank you. Miguel, thank you so very much. Please accept this small token of appreciation. And now, what you've all come to see and what you graduates are here to receive, your graduation certificates. I will ask Mr. Kelly and Dr. Constantino to come forward for the awarding of the certificates, and Mr. Swenson and Ms. Cox will assist. Rama Afsalarad. Lizzie Bishop. Taylor Chesser. Sean Crum. Jack Dement. Christian Geed. Anthony Hitt. Yeah, boy. Thank you. Jake Lineman. Carlos Linares. Woo! Dalton Locke. Joanna Loftus. Woo! 
Lucas Ringham. Allie Ripley. <laughs> Melissa Stempen. Angel True Hill. Austin Warren. Isaiah Willis. <laughs> Dante Iacovoni. If any of you have ever watched American Idol um, over the past years, um, you may remember Jimmy Iovine, the music guru that was on there giving everyone advice. He gave a graduation speech recently, and the advice that he gave to the graduates um, just kind of resonated with me, and I wanted to repeat it for you tonight. He said, that diploma you hold in your hands today is really just your learner's permit for the rest of your drive through life. Remember, you don't have to be smarter than the next person. All you have to do is be willing to work harder than the next person. I think it's um, a good send off for you because you've already shown us that you can persevere, you can stick with it, and you'll get to the end if you try. So don't stop trying, keep persevering. Before you recess, graduates, you have one last thing that you need to do. I would ask you to move your tassels from the right to the left. You've done it. Congratulations. Thank you all for attending the ceremony tonight. The graduates will recess and then you may leave.